Wouldn't it be nice to have a physiology where you could manipulate your body composition without a lot of stress? Taking your lean body mass up at times, taking your fat mass down at other times before you want to race. That's going to be our topic today. Now, last time I ended with a chart and it's about just a simple test you can do to have a look at your first threshold. Now, why do we want to understand where our first threshold is? It's got to do with body comp, but it also has to do with performance. There is a very well established relationship in exercise physiology that as our lactate rises, our fat oxidation, the energy that we take from fat, declines. And it will depend how rapidly it declines, depends on how fit we are. How fit we are in a green zone, low end endurance sense. Now with my own lab testing and with the lab testing results that I've seen with elites, particularly world-class elite Ironman athletes, occasionally we see something that's a little bit unusual, which is fat oxidation. There are the ability to use fat for fuel persisting as the lactate is rising. And I've always wondered if there's something else going on or if there's just so many mitochondria there that they're not getting crowded out. Um, as an energy pathway. I'm just putting that out there in case there's an exercise physiologist because the science um, is much better understood now, but I don't feel like it's completely understood. There's another thing that you're going to hear a lot, which is it's all about energy balance. In other words, it's all about energy in versus energy out. And that could be right. But in the real world, there's more going on than simply the energy balance. There's gonna be hunger and there's gonna be the energy that you actually eat. And one of the things you're gonna find is that if you do a lot of tempo and threshold training, you're gonna have ridiculous sugar cravings. And I believe you're also increasing your risks for certain eating disorders if at the same time you're trying to cut weight because you are gonna be chronically hungry and if you're doing high volume, those are ideal conditions to trip into something like bulimia or effectively exercise anorexia where you're uh, not meeting your energy needs. So be aware of that. There's a better way than doing a lot of tempo and running energy deficits all the time, which is effectively what a lot of these low carb uh, coaches are nudging you uh, to do. There was a big problem with this 20 years ago. Uh, and I think we're much better now at fueling the burn in terms of understanding that it's really necessary to fuel ourselves when we're training, but it still persists this desire uh, and this belief that if we can underfuel during training, it will prove to be a positive adaptation. That's not the case. A much better way to play it is to figure out where that first threshold is. Where are you when your lactate is bottomed out? And if your lactate is bottomed out, you are very likely at the point you're exercising when your fat uh, utilization is high. It might not necessarily be at its highest because bear in mind, as the power is going up, as the pace is going up, the total energy requirements per minute per hour, however you want to look at it, are going up. So if the fat oxidation gets slightly impaired, but the overall energy needs are higher, then your total fat burn might be a little higher. But this is a very effective way of coming close to it. And if you are someone who is seeking to make body composition adjustments, particularly reducing uh, your total mass, particularly your fat mass, hanging around this point or lower is very effective for you. It's also very effective for endurance training. I do a lot of it. And 
my results speak for themselves. It is a foundational part of every solid athletes program. So you're going to have to test though, because if you're used to doing a lot of tempo or you're someone who has a lot of stress in your life and you may find that your baseline is not all that low and you can work on lowering both baseline and increasing the power and pace that you can produce at baseline. Both are very favorable adaptations and both will have a direct impact on your ability to manipulate body composition, particularly to become a little bit leaner at certain times of the year when it makes sense for uh, race specific performance. Now, let's just finish up. Where do you want to hang out? A lot of people, let's go back to the swimmer analogy. A lot of people who feel that they are built like seals want to be built like sharks. My argument is that you want to be a dolphin and for a race day. You don't necessarily want to be a shark. You don't want to be that lean. And I would definitely say that seal build, that build that's a little softer, a little more muscular, is a great place to hang out for most of the year, particularly if you're pushing total load and total volume. You will find you have a weight that is your strongest recovery weight, and that is a great place for you to hang out when you're going big and making adaptations. Mm -hmm.